Hey everybody, this is John from Models by John Michael. If you could go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be fantastic. Be sure to hit that notification bell. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and check out some of the stuff I got posted there. So in this video, I want to do an in-the-box review, kit review, for this right here. This is the OS2U Kingfisher. It's a 130 second scale. So usually, if you've been watching my channel, you know that 148 scale is usually my favorite scale to work in. Uh, this is a larger kit, 130 second scale kit. And this uh, kit is by Kitty Hawk. So this is my first Kitty Hawk kit that I've ever had. So I'm kind of excited uh, to get to work on this thing. This is going to be a commission build. So the uh, my the guy who wants me to do this for him actually had bought the kit and had it sent to me. I haven't started on it yet because I'm still working on the P51B Mustang. Um, I also have to iron out some details with him. But anyway, so this will be my next project. So I'll just dive right into the kit. Oh, you know, let's go around the outside of the box real quick, actually. So you saw the front cover already. So on the side here, it kind of gives you the different versions you can do. So you've got the British version, a U.S. version, a Russian version, and that's another U.S. Navy version that you can do on there. And then you get some real pictures of the actual model. Kind of takes you through some of the different looks of the different aircraft. And on the other side, a couple more uh, pictures of, of versions of this kit. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So before this, I was not familiar with Kitty Hawk kits at all. So I've seen them online. I've, I've seen people talk about them, but I had never actually uh, even seen a, uh, one in a box in person, at least not to my knowledge, because I don't think my uh, local hobby shop carries these kits. So the instruction manual is a mixture of full color photos and then just your typical uh, model diagram. So if you look here, you've got your fold outs that kind of take you through the different uh, types you know, or the different layouts for your paint and whatnot. And then mixed in is your is the uh, your instructions. So, and on this one here, and one thing that's unusual about this kit that I've already noticed, instead of starting with the pilot and the cockpit, this one actually starts you out with the engine, which is a little interesting to me, but. I mean, I'm going to follow the instructions just because I'm sure they have their logic as to why it's laid out the way that it is. So it'll be interesting uh, starting with that. Um, and then it doesn't give you, it just gives you general uh, colors. So it says like copper, intermediate blue, silver, black. It doesn't really give you specific uh, color names. So like on the, all the Tamiya kits, it'll tell you exactly what color you need to be using. So it'll say, you know, uh, sky gray, or it'll say uh, sea blue or something like that. But it won't tell you, it won't just say, you know, gray or intermediate blue, or it'll give you, or, and it'll actually give you the number of the paint you're using. So like X32 or X16 or whatever the case may be, it'll do all that. Uh, the other thing that Kitty Hawk does, at least in this kit, which is really unique, and I really like this uh, concept, is they put their clear parts in a separate box, which I truly, truly like. So there you go. Keeps the, the parts from getting crushed, scratched, etc. So it's really nice to have that as a separate um, uh, ordeal in the, in the kit. So it, it just... And it, honestly, it makes the kit feel a little more um, high class, I guess you could say. So it's kind of, it's really, really nice touch from Kitty Hawk. So, and then here is the kit itself. I haven't taken anything out of the plastic yet. 
I'm just going to leave everything in the plastic until I actually start building on this thing. But the detail on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Really nothing that I would say that is lacking or wanting on this kit. Um, so nicely done by them. I'm not going to take all the spurs out or all the sprues out. I'll just, uh, let's see here. We got another one here. So you really got your main pontoon halves and then your smaller pontoons that are on the wings, you got your tires, all that kind of stuff. But very, very nicely done by them. I'm excited to get to work on this kit. I haven't, I haven't worked on a Kingfisher in, I don't know, it's been decades now. I think I did one as a kid and I believe that was a Ravel kit, probably was a Ravel kit or a monogram kit. As in those days, that's what most of the kits that I did were. But it was not a 132nd scale. It was probably a 148th scale. And I seem to remember painting that one like a bright green color. Um, but this one I'm going to do in the markings that the customer wants. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing this one. So, and one thing I always, I really thought was interesting was this one here with the green underbelly on the, uh, for the Royal Air Force, which kind of an interesting color to paint the bottom of your aircraft. I don't know why they chose a, a bright green, but, but then again, they did have a, uh, a light pink Spitfire that they used in World War II for, um, things like, uh, what was it, reconnaissance. Um, usually to check, um, you know, if a bombing run had been successful or something like that. So I guess it's really not much of a stretch of, an, of the imagination to, for why, you know, to have a, a, the underbelly of an aircraft painted a bright green color. So just really interesting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, and one thing I just want to show you guys real quick I don't know, I haven't really, I haven't talked about it before, but I'll talk about it now. So one of the things that I've been getting into over the last, I would say, year, year and a half is whiskeys and scotches. And I just want to share this with you guys. So this is my current favorite uh, whiskey. It's, a, it's called the Sexton. It's an Irish single malt whiskey. Um... It's very, very nice, a very, uh, it's kind of on the sweeter side, honestly. I think if you're newer to drinking whiskey and you, and you, you know, and you don't want to necessarily go down the road of like Crown Royal or something like that, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, but you want to try something that's maybe a little, uh, different. Uh, this is definitely a, a good, this is a good one. Uh, matter of fact, I was reading an article the other day. This was on the list of top 10 whiskeys to try. So, great whiskey. Very uniquely shaped bottle, as you can tell. And, of course, you've got the, the awesome uh, skull with the top hat on the, on the top. And on the front here, you've got that. And it's the gold and black label. So, very, very easy to find. Very easy to identify if you go to your local liquor store. Um, so, yeah. This is my current favorite whiskey. As a matter of fact, that's the second bottle I've had. In, um, uh, let's see, I think the first one I bought was in September. Now it's December, so good stuff. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll get some more content up here fairly soon as time allows. So anyway, guys, you all take care. Happy modeling.